who is the best guard in the entire game. I think he's still a 99 overall in Zach Martin. And just stepping down to that gap is going to confuse him long enough that it's going to mess up the protection and it's going to get the other guy in straight through the A-gap. You see the guard on that side drops back immediately to take that away, but that just makes the pressure come from a different area. He's just turned to run because he's got two guys coming off the edge both sides and there's nothing you can do. He will loop around the edge every single time, just like the old style loop blitzes did before the patch. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today, and today I'm going to be going over my current favorite defense, the Big Nickel Over G. Last week, I put out a full breakdown of the iPhone Close, and that was really popular. You guys really seem to like that, so I'm going to try to keep putting out a full breakdown of whatever offense or defense I'm currently using in a practice mode style video like this, because there's so many plays in this formation. I probably have like 8 to 10 plays that I like in this formation, and I can only show you guys a few in a gameplay with that being really long and redundant so i obviously i'm going to continue to keep making gameplays but whatever gameplays i make going forward whenever i show you guys some new plays i'm going to have a link in that description to bring you guys back to this video so you can see the entire breakdown rather than watching 10 different gameplays uh which you know obviously if you like to do that i try to make the gameplays fun but if you don't like to do that you're gonna be able to get that all here in a practice mode style that might be easier for a lot of people to consume so if you want to see me continue to do this style of video please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section and if you want to see more the next one that i could do i still use the three four odd quite a bit i got some more gameplays planned for the three four odd it's still a very good defense if you guys want to see a full breakdown of this make sure to let me know in the comment section hit the like button other than that let's go let's get right into the video now before i get into the actual plays i want to show you guys my setup one of the best things about this defense is it's very flexible you have two linebackers here which is probably best if you're running against somebody who's running the ball a lot you're going to want to keep those linebackers in the game but if you have somebody who's passing a lot you usually can switch these guys out for safeties whatever extra safeties you have you can put here if somebody's passing a lot because I have a lot of man zero blitzes I'll typically put cornerbacks in these safety spots because I have some good cornerbacks on the bench and guys like Maddox and uh, Isaiah Rogers Jr. is our senior here so those would typically be my safeties if a guy's passing a lot then I'll put my best safeties in at these linebacker spots this guy here though is going to blitz a lot well actually two guys this guy here this safety and this guy are going to blitz a lot in this package so putting somebody just who's just fast there is the most important I typically use a guy like Keely Ringo because he's like a really lowly rated rookie cornerback but he's got a 90 for speed which is perfect so that's just some tips you can do as far as your adjustments other than that i also like to make sure that i have my zone coverage set to match and my uh, my flats and curl flats set to default because i want this to be a matching defense there's a lot of really good matching principal defenses in this package so i typically have that on and i also want to make sure i have my auto alignment to base so that all these defenses look exactly the same so let's go and let's get into it like i said i'm not gonna make too many adjustments although i will make sure that i have that blitzing cornerback that i was talking about here uh because that is going to be important but ultimately there's a lot of really good blitzes here there's two styles really there's regular zone coverages like the cover four quarters and the cover six or the cover six trap which i'll go over first and based off the fact that a lot of these defenses are similar i'm not going to show you every single one like there's a lot of defenses that have the blitzing safety this entire page here is full of, of blitzing safety defenses which i'm going to show you just one time because you can do the exact same setup through all three of these plays i think there's a four my favorite is going to be the pinch blitz, which I'll show a little bit later. And then you also have a lot of blitzes called the SS Blitz 2, the SS Blitz 3, and the SS Linebacker Blitz, which are all basically the same, where this, this same safety that I told you to put a fast cornerback or just a fast player at is going to be blitzing off the other side. So those are all very good, uh, similar style blitzes. So I'm not going to show every single one because the setup is going to be the same for every single one. So let's go and start off with some of my, I'll, call, I'll start off with my favorite defense in this entire formation, and that is the Cover 6 Trap. Now, before I get into the video, as always, if you guys need more offenses and defensive breakdowns or to see these with written descriptions, you can always download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. Now, as far as a setup goes for this particular defense, there really isn't one. I don't really have too much of a setup. There is an alternate setup that I will show you guys because the weakest side of this defense is definitely this side here where this safety is because 
even though cover twos where it's basically cover two on both sides one of the weaknesses to a regular cover two is right down the middle you can basically i mean you have a mid read here but if you don't have this guy in like a middle third which i tried to put and it didn't let me as i don't know maybe i can't put him in a middle third as i am hitting that button there we go if you don't have a middle third and regular cover two that's a huge weakness so to me it's really the still you know one of the biggest benefits to this defense is the fact that we have a safety there who's going to try to take that away you can't really attack the, the middle because this guy here is going to match and he's going to take that away so that's one of the better things about it but sometimes when i do an alternate setup if i want to help out this safety over here if i think that he needs to be over here a little bit more i'll just put one of these guys here into a middle third the same way just to help out with that deep coverage because i can cover the middle all by myself and then the, the zone will look a lot like this if i want to stop the run better i can basically just pinch the defensive line if i expect my opponent to pass it's third and long fourth and long i'll spread the defensive line for better pressure that's all you really got to do those two adjustments they're simple but that's exactly what the effect is of them if you pinch better run defense but also worse pass rush and if you spread better pass rush but worse run defense so just remember that but other than that i'll typically just cover the middle myself i don't really need a ton of help but if i'm not worried about the deep coverage say my opponent isn't really threatening that way then i'll just basically run this play exactly like this and i'll just use in the middle the three rec hook though is the better of the two the vert hook itself doesn't really man match as well as the three rec hook does so i typically like to leave that one alone because he'll he'll cover a lot better and i'll try to let the uh, the play play out by itself just to see what happens as I got to take that away. We'll just basically let the computer run it because like I said, I'm not really uh, too concerned as far as what the results are. Like I said, if you watch my gameplays, you know that this works. And if you watch my gameplays, you definitely know that I get a lot of interceptions, a lot of takeaways because a lot of people don't really know how to handle this. As you can see right there, I mean, the coverage, I don't know what Dak was trying for, but the coverage was all over that. I'll go to the replay because like I said, I'm not too worried about the results here. That's not my job. But for whatever reason, he tried to hit this wheel route and he was just all over that. And the reason that I have match turned on is because when you don't have match turned on, a lot of times they'll just play to the spot which means this cornerback will just drop back and not let anybody get get behind them but if you have match on they're going to man match and they're going to turn and they're going to run these routes as you can see right here that's exactly what it did he turned and ran the route with cd lamb so that's why having the match coverage on is so important now if we look at the rest of this play there really isn't a ton here i mean you can see this guy's pretty much covered the ball was in the air he's just got a short route but you can see we have our man at least in the area and everything's pretty much locked up there's not really a lot of opportunity where there's not a defender really close which is one of the reasons i like this defense so much some of the other benefits of this defense is against the run where if i basically expect my opponent to run and i've said this in previous videos i'll say it again later in this video cover four is one of the best run defenses because these safeties here will drop down and play they'll drop down and fill as long as you don't uh, guess pass cover four safeties will play the run like linebackers so if you have him close to the line like this he's going to help you with inside run support but if your opponent is under center a lot of times one of the best ways to beat cover four is to the outside running a stretch run or something like that because these cornerbacks will drop back just like regular cover fours because that's their job They're, they don't want to let anything get behind them so basically it'll be weak outside but it'll be good inside which makes this defense really good because you have a cover two squat or a cover two soft squat and these cover two cornerbacks typically play the outside run better so you really get the best of both worlds i don't recommend man like aligning playing underneath anything like that because if you hard flat it will it will take away the matching principles but if you know your opponent's going to run in this look you can hard flat and you can get the benefit of these outside defenders trying to hold these edges so that's one of the best things about this particular defense is that you do have the best of both worlds with one safety helping out with inside run defense and one cornerback helping out with outside run defense you just have to make sure they're on the right side but still it's still a very versatile defense and also one of the best things about this defense is most people don't know what they're looking at half the time they don't know how to attack it ebooks like mine i don't typically touch on cover six too much i mean if i were to attack this defense it would definitely be on the cover two side which is what i was mentioning earlier but you can always make adjustments like i could always mabel this side if i'm concerned about it i could always um like i said earlier i could put this guy over the middle if i'm worried about it although for some reason it's not letting me do that but you know you could always do a number of coverage adjustments to try to take and help out on the cover two side but this is a very flexible defense that like i said gets a lot of turnovers which you'll notice if you use it in gameplay anytime you see a soft squat which is what i was in uh on that cornerback side as you can see right here we have a, a regular soft squat that means it's a matching cover two if it's a cloud flat or a hard flat it's not a matching cover two so this is going to perform much better like i said i broke that down a lot in my gameplay so i'm not going to break that down anymore here's we're going to move on 
I'm going to go ahead and go under center on the next play because my number one run defense in this formation is the cover four palms for the reason I just mentioned in the cover six trap. Now, cover four is my favorite run defense, but it's still a pretty good pass defense with the exception of going against things that have three or four receivers on one side of the field. That's the easiest way to glitch out cover four. So if your opponent's in a gun bunch or if they're in a gun empty quads where there's four receivers on one side of the field, don't run this formation or you're going to give up easy one-play touchdowns because that glitches this defense out very easily. But against cover four, normally against, you know, if I see somebody under center, a lot of tight ends, and I want to stay in this formation, this is going to be my best run defense. The set of my run defense, I want to pinch the defensive line. Unless I think they're going to be running outside. I mean, if, if they're running outside a lot, you can spread to try to maintain that edge, but you're going to have gaps up the middle. So if you think they're going to run inside, pinch the defensive line. And then I also like to make try to get these linebackers and this cornerback outside the wise blocker to try to cut off the outside after that i really just want to bring these linebackers or these safeties down because they're going to act like outside linebackers where they're basically going to fill the inside or the outside lanes and hopefully we'll get some run plays because i did actually just choose um random you can see they run the stretch but the blockers are pretty much took up and you can see i mean that play i made the play but you can see part of the reason I made that play is because this blocker didn't take me on. It was this guy or was the next guy. Yeah, this guy. He didn't take me on. He took the safety on because the safety's down the box the same way. So they have to target that. And that basically let me to slip through and make the play. So this is not the best run defense in the world. You probably want more size for most run defenses. But, I mean, I'm, I definitely wouldn't choose this against a three tight end set. That's not the best move. But if my opponent is running the ball a lot, this is my go-to defense. And my setup is either, I mean, I can leave this linebacker in to help me out with inside runs, or I can just motion them down. And like I said, the most important part is get these guys close to the line of scrimmage. Because if you don't guess pass, they will walk down and try to play the run. As you can see right here on the last play, if you watch that replay once again, he's just walking down for his run fits. He's not worried about the pass first. Cover four safeties will always worry about the run first. That's why this guy got picked up because he was right in that lane so good run defense i'm not going to run that too much just wanted to show you guys the setup and it's still like i said it's the best run defense in the formation now that we got through all the coverages there's no other regular coverages in this formation that i like to use they got a cover three match which is okay they got a couple of you know other things but they're all a step down and if i'm going to switch coverages i'm probably want to have some pressure behind it so my favorite pressure scheme that i use the most in my gameplays is definitely the ss blitz three because number one it's a matching cover three which I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, but number two is because I find that it has the best deep coverage. I typically call this one like a third and long, a fourth and long. And you can see I'm still giving up one of the lowest averages on the entire formation at a 5.4 because I get pressure so easily with this. So I'm going to show you guys a blitz that you can do with the SS Blitz 3 and also with the SS Blitz 2. But like I said earlier, I'm not going to show, um, you know, I'm not going to show the setup more than once because it's the exact same thing. But if you like cover two, this is once again a matching cover two, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. But cover two match is something that a lot of people like to run so you have two options and they're both matching which is perfect because that's the better version anyway so for this setup number one I want to just get this cornerback a little bit closer. I don't have to if my opponent's running a hurry up or something like that. I don't necessarily have to do that, but this is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to make the blitz get in the fastest if you bring it like about five to seven yards outside of the tackle box. The only real part of the setup after that is just to pinch this defensive line. I don't feel like you really have to do much more than that and then bring this guy down over the center and blitz him. And then I'll also guess pass, but I only want to do that if I know my opponent's going to pass. But like I said, I only call this one third and long, fourth and long anyway, so that's pretty much the idea. So I'm just going to hover this gap for like a half a second before I drop back. I have pretty good coverage, but I am responsible for over the middle, so I really have to get back on these, these receivers. And you can see the underneath running back was there, but he didn't get much because it's a matching coverage, so they're going to play pretty tight. Now, I did also see that the pressure got in pretty quickly. As you can see, maybe I have to bring him in a little bit closer next time, but that was what forced Dak you know, he just loops around. Nobody blocks him. So I have four guys getting blocked by five guys. And you can see that we, we get the pressure. Now, I don't know if I have my fastest guy yet. Rogers is a pretty fast player. Might have to replace him. But still, you can see he's right in Dak's ear, unblocked, which is the point. One of the benefits of this particular thing is you can really do any coverage behind it that you like or that you want, really. Now, my biggest thing here, like I said, if I'm going to run the cover two, I want to make sure that this guy's taking away that deep middle third because I don't want to have to deal with that. But other than that, the setup's the exact same. So I'll run this one time in hopes that um, we actually get a sack because I know people care about that. But you can see right there, we, sometimes you get pressure off the other side. And the reason that I let Hassan Reddick in free like that is because they're picking up on this blitzing cornerback 
and they're trying to take him away. You can see the guard on that side drops back immediately to take that away, but that just makes the pressure come from a different area. So it doesn't necessarily have to come from the cornerback. You'll see that a lot of times where the entire line shifts to the cornerback blitzing side, and it'll let the defensive end on the opposite side in free, which is fine by me because the sound reg is probably much better anyway. Now, there's another uh, series of blitzes, which I will show before I get to the man zero blitzes because I run the man zero blitzes probably the most. But there is a setup where you have the weak safety blitz series. Now, this is the weak safety blitz one, two, and three. Same idea. You can use whatever one you want. I don't use this nearly as much, but one defense that I have found that I started using that I like a lot is the pinch blitz. Now, this one here, you can see I'm only allowing 3.1 yards of care or an attempt against this defense. I definitely plan on bringing out a gameplay about this defense because this is really good. But let's focus on these first because the setups can be pretty similar between the two. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to do the cover one because, like I said, I do like that one. I think cover one's one of the better coverages we'll continue with this with this formation one of the best things about this is you don't really have to make any adjustments if i want to run it just like this i can you can see already though the the fact that i have dean on a linebacker that's not necessarily great i got a man line and kind of show my hand a little bit which isn't necessarily what i want to do uh, in any defense but in a cover one i would have to do that so i got my blitz and safety down here the only other step and it's really optional is to pinch the defensive line now if i pinch the defensive line before i manually move this, move this safety he's going to walk back take his time and then walk back down by then the, your opponent's probably hiking the ball this is something that ea put in the game based off the fact that people were doing stuff like this a couple years back and they had to like put some sort of delay so that you you couldn't set up your defense the way that you wanted to it's total nonsense but that's exactly what they did so basically i already messed this up somehow because now the defensive end is out wide but that's fine so all i'm going to do is the exact same thing as i was doing before where i'm going to bring this guy down i'm going to blitz the user and now we're just getting it off the other side with the safe compared to the side where the um where the other where the where the you know the weak side where this is coming off the strong side that's really the only difference but that whole thing got messed up because for some reason when you do this as i as I, you can see right there see how the safety drops back by himself now he's in a position where he's going to hesitate you know that's why it pays to either do this before you make that adjustment move this guy before you make that adjustment or just don't pinch at all because realistically you don't have to pinch that's that's one of the things about this defense is it works pretty much the same whether you pinch the defensive line or you don't so like i say he's down the line now hopefully we'll actually play a little aggressive We'll, we'll press and play underneath just to try to take away those short throws so that maybe we can get this loop around although i don't know what we're looking at here and you can see we get a run anyway and once again he's not getting much mostly because i was on top of it but you can see that force defender for one thing definitely cuts down on where the uh the running back is going to go as you can see right here i mean if he wants to cut back he can't because this guy's here if he's under center this guy's going to contain the outside uh which is you know all good as far as run defense is concerned is you have a contained guy so my favorite play with this blitzing setup is going to be the pinch blitz and this is because it really combines the elements of the first two so let's go and let's pick random once again this play here is very similar as far as setup. I have to use this guy and move him or else he's going to run back the second to make that pinch. The pinch is not necessary if you expect your opponent to pass. It's only necessary if you expect your opponent to uh, to run. It's going to be better if you expect your opponent to run because this pinched alignment is going to shut down inside runs and those, those looping cornerback and safety combo is going to stop the outside runs. So I don't know what my opponent's going to do, but I'm going to hover this gap the same way, pinch defensive line, and guess pass because I'm expecting a pass most likely based on the fact that that's you know the series there and you can see i gotta get over on that uh, running back because that is my responsibility but it's usually something that's doable just as long as you don't get caught up on the actual um the actual center which won't typically happen because he'll be happy to disengage the second he sees you walk away because they know the offensive line knows that there's six guys coming so i didn't actually uh look at the pressure that i got though as you can see they both loop, loop around but dak's gonna get rid of it quick because that's the type of quarterback he is i'm pretty sure that's how he's programmed in the game is to take those short throws and it's pretty much the look like i said i just have to you know i don't even really have to be over the center if i want to cheat over to the running back side i can do that because i can shorten my uh the distance i have to go to get that running back and now i'm all over that a lot quicker and you can see the difference as we set up the uh the the adjustments up appropriately as we get the uh the right guys in the right places and we get a sack on the very first play now i'll run again but let's go ahead and let's watch the replay there to see what happened because i cheated over the running back side i'm guessing that's why he didn't take that right away and he's turned to run because he knew his his goose was cooked because he's got two guys coming off the edge both sides and there's nothing you can do
So that's probably my new favorite, and I do plan on making a gameplay about that pretty soon, but there's a couple other ones here that are really good as well. Now, the Casino Blitz is probably the biggest all-out blitz, and it's going to combine some of the elements that I'm going to show you from these next two blitzes, which is the SS Linebacker Blitz and the Linebacker Blitz. Let's go and let's choose the Linebacker Blitz first. Now, there's really two options with this defense. Number one, I like to bring this guy down and just put him on a blitz. That's all I really got to do. If My choice, if I want to hover this gap before dropping back, uh, and, and it's covering Pollard or sometimes I'll just drop down in this gap here and I'll drop back and cover Pollard from here So I still have the same two blitzing linebackers So basically he lets me in there Pollard picks it up but You can see Dax on the run. He throws a bad pass and we're just bodying uh, You know, we, we still got the pressure clearly the pressure forced that bad throw if I don't want to cover the running back though I can basically just spread the defense and then drop down over one of these gaps It really doesn't even matter for run defense. I don't want to drop over the center but since I don't know, I usually wouldn't call us unless I'm expecting a pass. And you can see that guy looped around once again, and Dak throws another interception. I'll go ahead and let him tackle me before I show that. But we did have a free blitzer right at the center gap again, or the guard gap rather. We're not getting a lot of sacks on tape, but that's fine because we are getting a lot of interceptions. You can see this guy just loops in. And that starts because I basically confuse the offensive line before the snap by hovering the gap. You can see 70 here, who is the best guard in the entire game. I think he's still a 99 overall in Zach Martin. He got confused. You know what I'm saying? Just stepping down in that gap is going to confuse him long enough that it's going to mess up the protection. And it's going to get the other guy in straight through the A gap or through the B gap free. So that's one of my favorite blitzes. As you can see, it's very effective right through the middle, which makes it very quick. But this one here I use a lot too, is it's more of one of my base defensive setups. So I'll pick that, continue with random. This play here, once again, two options. We'll always want to make sure this cornerback's down there, but pinching this defensive line will help him get off the edge. And then I have two options. If I don't want to cover the running back, I can just come down over the gap like this. This will help to get that cornerback blitzing off the edge free before I drop back. And I don't have to cover the running back. I can just basically drop back on whoever I want. Now, the pinch, like I said, cover zero is definitely not the best run defense. That's one thing you got to know. Any cover zero defense in the game is susceptible to the run. So when I'm showing you these defenses, you have to bear in mind that there's going to be scenarios that are just naturally good against these defenses. Covers, cover one or cover zero is going to still lose the zigs, slants, drags. That's why it's my job as a responsible user to drop back and try to cut off any route that I see getting beat. As you can see right there, I, I hesitated a slight second because there was multiple crossing routes or else I would have had an interception there. So as I'm starting this play down this gap, I have to make sure that I drop back and cut back, you know, cut off, just watch for anybody that's beating their coverage and try to cut off that route. As you can see here, once again, that time we get the interception because that's really all I'm looking for. I know that the quarterback's going to have to get the ball out quick because of the pressure. So I really just have to watch for quick openings and jump those routes, which you'll see in my gameplays. I get a lot of interceptions. The last gameplay video I put out, I had multiple interceptions doing the exact same thing because all I'm doing is cutting off the first thing that I see which here, this is the exact same play because the last play I hesitated on the drag where this time I just I just basically stuck it out the whole way and took off the tight end on the slant and we get another interception. But the reason that I wanted to show this replay was actually the looping pressure. As you can see, he's aware that there's nobody blocking this guy coming around the edge, which is why he throws that ball out. And that guy will get around the edge. He will loop around the edge every single time, just like the old style loop blitzes did before the patch. So those two are kind of similar, but this last one here really combines the two with the casino blitz. I run this one. I want to get full all-out pressure but the best part about it is there virtually is no setup at all you just have to find which receivers uncovered and cover them yourself i mentioned this in my last gameplay as well because i did highlight this play once again you really just have to uh, isolate who's not covered because we're sending more blitzers than we have covers the running back's typically going to be the guy so i just got to take the guy closer to the running back drop down over the over the guard gap once again i did pinch the defensive line although you don't have to you can leave it spread and that will help get this guy in more this um this safety here is like won't even let me get on him pinching him will make it harder for him but it'll make it easier for this cornerback so that's basically the idea so like i said no real setup when i do this play when i choose this play all the guys are already blitzing so i'm just going to send extra guys and whoever's uncovered i'm just going to get closest to them drop down and then we get a run play like i said cover zero not the best run defense um you know that's what cover four and cover six trap are for those are going to be more more realistic run defenses i'm just going to press the entire defense this time because i'm not too concerned with the results of the play and you're going to see how we get another screen play which that time i was all over because like i said the running back is my responsibility no matter what he does i got to be there so that's that's the vid if you guys want to see more from this defense i will have the gameplays that i put out because i put out a lot of them popping up on screen so if you're if 
you're doubting the success of them against live opponents. Click the links. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.